Welcome to Watch Chat, where we chat about watches and other facts of life. This is the Gorilla Fastback Carbon GT Drift Elise Limited Edition, a relative of the Royal Oak Offshore. A year ago, I've reviewed the Gorilla Fastback Carbon GT Spectro, which has rhodium plated indices and an open heart. If you've missed that video, I'll put a link in the description below. This here is the Spectro's older brother, the Drift Elise. It's the older brother because it is a more complicated and a more expensive watch. This has the Wandering Hours complication, a complication that is also used by brands such as H. Moser and Ework, but with a small fraction of their price. This costs about 3250 USD, excluding taxes. The Drift Alice is measured at 44mm in diameter or 48.5mm with the crown guards, 56mm in height and 14mm thick. Having said that, it doesn't wear too huge on my 16cm circumference risk. The layered case construct is made out of a matte green bead blasted ceramic bezel, anodized aluminum golden pin strip, woven forged carbon case, and a titanium screw case back cover. This is not your regular stainless steel watch. The case shape on a gorilla is really amazing. It is a hexagon over a dodecagon, an 8 angle bezel over a 12 sided case. How Gorilla is able to seamlessly integrate the different materials and different shape size is indeed amazing. The side of the carbon case has a brush effect whereas the front has a checkered design like a checkered flag. The strap also flows seamlessly from the case. The rubber here is pretty good quality. It's green with yellow holes designed, with 8 holes for adjustability. The reverse side of the strap is yellow with lines that look like the belly of a snake, and holes to help with breathability. The two holders are also in green with only one that has the brand name Deboss on it. The titanium pin buckle also has the brand name Deboss on it. The open case back here has the limited edition number engraved on it. This here is limited to 350 pieces. Showcasing underneath this AR coated sapphire crystal is the modified ETA 2824 2, which is an automatic movement, 4Hz, 28,800 VPH, hacking function, and a 38 hours of power reserve. The huge carbon crown guards protect the titanium screw down crown. Because of the shape of the crown, the crown here is really easy to grab and turn. This here has a 100 meter of water resistance, which qualify it as a diver's watch pursuant to the ISO 6425. The display underneath the AR Sapphire Crystal has a very good blend of black, yellow, white, and steel. This watch is all about its visual effects. The dial here has a black sunburst effect with steel screws giving it a rather industrial and playful look. The brand name Gorilla is painted on at the 12 o'clock position and the words Voucher Manufacturer and Swiss Made are painted between the 4 and the 8 o'clock position. The team collaboration with Voucher Manufacturer Fleuray has managed to portray the most recognizable of British racing liveries here. The hour and minute hands are depicted using a 3 yellow disc mechanism you see here. The 3 discs are stamped with circular patterns to improve on the aesthetics. The numbers on the disc are painted in black. I like the rectangular font shape used on the numbers here making it very easy to read them. More about them later. Moving upwards is a black wheel gear holding the three discs with steel screws. The black wheel gear also operates as a visual aesthetic and a barrier on the numbers. More about that later too. Most wandering hours complications don't come with a second hand. This, however, does, and I really do appreciate it and it is in green matching the colour on the bezel and with a black counterweight. The rehaul is in yellow matching the colour on the tree disc and is divided into two parts. The bottom part depicts the minute tracks in black used for the reading of the seconds. 
The second hand extends beyond the dial all the way across the rehort, making it very easy to read it. The upper part of the rehort, however, has a different kind of minute track, also painted in black. Although it has a 5 minute numeral intervals, it also has a breakdown of every single minute painted there to help give an accurate reading of the time. In case you're wondering how do you time the seconds with the upper part of the rehaul, well, the double zero here doubles up as the 50th seconds. The 15 minute here doubles up as the 55th seconds. And the 30 minute here doubles up as the 60th or zero seconds. And it goes on. So, how do you read the time on a wandering hour? You look at the disc that is at the upper part of this watch. The number that is unblocked by the wheel gear shows the current hour of the time. The mini pointer above that number points to the minute of the hour on the rehaul. That's how you read it. Cool, huh? What I particularly like about the design on the Drift Elise is that the font design on the numbers on the disc are rectangularly shaped giving it clear legibility or an impression like they are displayed on a window without actually having a window frame. Then there is that wheel gear that doubles up as a barrier on the other numbers so that your eyes focuses on the correct number. This is pretty smart as it uses less materials making it less cluttered. The font on the disc is also similar to the font design on the rehaul giving it some uniformity. The whole wheel gear design, steel screw on the dial, allen key screw on the bezel, industrial looking crown, makes the entire watch look very mechanical. The finishing on this piece is really good, and it is apparent that there were a lot of thought put in in creating this timepiece. The bicolor mixture used here is also very attractive. My only complaint, if any, is the lack of lume and the counterweight on the second hand should also be in green. Otherwise, this is a very good looking watch. It is not something you would wear into a boardroom for sure, but it is still a fun young quirky watch that you can wear during your off day. What do you think of this watch? Does it not give you the Audemars Piquet's offshore vibe? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this kind of video, please like, share, subscribe and hit that notification icon to support me and I'll really appreciate it and promise to make more videos like this. Until the next one, thank you for watching.